This is part 2 of JavaScript tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss why do we need both client-side and server-side validation. This is a very common interview question as well. This is continuation to part 1, so please watch part 1 before proceeding. If you recollect the example that we worked with in part 1 of this video series, we've got both client-side and server-side validation. This JavaScript function right here is providing the client-side validation and this c -sharp function within the code behind file is providing the server-side validation. So now, when we click the submit button on this form without entering any data, client-side validation kicks in and we are presented with these validation error messages right away. Now, what do you think is going to happen if we disable JavaScript support in the browser? At the moment, I'm using Google Chrome browser and to disable JavaScript in Google Chrome, click on this little button on the top right hand corner of the browser window and then select settings from the context menu. On this settings page within the search settings text box type JavaScript and then click on this content settings button and within this content settings window notice that we have got a section called JavaScript and here we have got a radio button which says do not allow any sites to run JavaScript. Select that radio button and click done. So now we have disabled JavaScript support in the browser. Now let's go ahead and rerun the application. Now when we click the submit button, the client-side JavaScript validation function is not going to run. But if you look at our application, we have got server-side validation function. So this function will still be executed, which means the form will still be validated. This also means that we don't end up storing invalid data within this users table. So if you look at this table, notice that we don't have any rows there. Now, let us go ahead and comment the line that calls our server-side validation function. So on the submit click uh, event handler method, we are calling the validate form validation function. So let's go ahead and comment that line and this closing brace as well. So now at the moment, we have disabled JavaScript. That means the client-side validation function will not run and we don't have any server-side validation function. So now when we click the submit button, what do you think is going to happen? We will end up storing invalid data within this users table. Look at this now, we have got one row. This ID column value is auto-generated. But look at the values for first name, last name and email. They are basically empty strings. Okay, so that is why it is very important to always have server-side validation function. Now, there are several ways we can issue requests to a web application. One way is by using a browser. Within the browser window, when we type the URL and then press Enter key, we are issuing a GET request to the web application. And when we click this Submit button, we're actually issuing a POST request. Now we can also use tools like Fiddler to issue requests to a web application. At the moment I already have Fiddler installed on my machine. This is a free tool uh, to install this. Just Google download the executable and then double click it and follow the on-screen instructions to install it. Once you have Fiddler installed, open it and then you know you should have a similar interface depending on the version you install. Uh, at the moment, the, ca the traffic is being captured by this tool. So let's clear all this traffic by clicking on this Remove All button. Now let's go back and then actually submit this form so that traffic is captured in Fiddler vendor. So notice that the this is our post request. Now what I'm going to do is drag and drop this request onto this Composer tab. So now there is a request here. Once I click this execute button, you know, this request will be issued to the web application, which means, you know, it's the same as clicking on the submit button here, but I'm issuing the request now using Fiddler tool. Now let's go back to SQL Server and look at the number of rows we have got here. Notice that at the moment we have got two rows because we clicked the submit button once again. Now let's go back to Fiddler and click on this execute button. So request executed. Now let's go back to SQL Server and look at that. There is a third row there. Now if we had the server-side validation function, you know, this would have validated the data before inserting that into the 
users table. That's why we should always have server-side validation function. So if JavaScript is disabled and if we don't have any server-side validation, there could be different threads ranging from storing invalid data to security vulnerabilities. Client-side validation, we know that it provides better user experience because it reduces the unnecessary round trips between the client and the server. So client-side validation is nice to have. However, if JavaScript is disabled or if the user is making a request using tools like Fiddler, we still want to validate the form before saving data to the database tables. So server-side validation should always be there irrespective of whether we have client-side validation or not. The ideal thing is to have both client-side validation and server-side validation because client-side validation provides better user experience and server-side validation provides better security because server-side validation is guaranteed to execute whereas client-side validation it depends on how the user is making the request. Thank you for listening and have a great day.